going guys gonna get back to the track footage in a second but I first want to start by saying thanks thanks for watching these videos thanks for watching this build uh, this bike was fully paid for by you guys through YouTube and I just want to say I appreciate it bike is awesome and before we get back to the track footage I want to say this is not so much of a step-by-step -step in how to set up your bike when you're at the track this is just the track part of this series is just gonna be uh, you coming along on the experience with me uh, it's gonna be quite a bit of GoPro footage even the first ride going around the track and getting used to it I didn't know if I was gonna be able to pull the trigger on some of the big jumps right off the rip if the bike was set up good enough for that or not but uh, wait for the footage and you'll see how that went but if you are interested in setting up your suspension yourself and you want some information on that down in the description will be a link to my video series on that it is long and winded it's one of my earlier videos and I did a lot of talking on it but I covered a lot of good information I pretty much put everything in the videos that I have and also stay tuned for the end of the video I actually test rode a Stark electric bike while I was out there I'll let you know how that went towards the end of the video and at any point if you start getting bored of watching me go around the track go pro footage it gets a little shaky sometimes gives you a headache or whatever um, just fast forward it to right here I'll put the timestamp and that will get you right back to where we're in here in the shop talking about the verdict how it went and what's planned next also the Stark review so here we go to the track what's going on Test and tune day for the 2022 YZ250. This will be my first time putting this bike on the track. A little bit of change of plans. I expected to go to MX74. That's kind of my favorite track to uh, tune suspension, and it, I, you know it's it's kind of my home track, and it gets bumpy. It's nice and softer ground too, so I get a better feel for things. But uh, so on Facebook last night, their skid steer is broken, so the track will not be opening up today. So we came out to Moto Bros in Okeechobee. Now, um, this is not a home track to me. I don't come out here very often, but uh, so I'm not as familiar with this track, which means it might take me a little more time to get everything dialed in. And the track is, they're first going to put us on the the easier track over there and then they'll put us on the bigger tougher track over here I'm hoping that by the time I get off that track I have the bike at least good enough because this one has some pretty big jumps and they're really fun but I'm not gonna hit them big jumps if this if this bike doesn't feel at least 90% close for me um, but let's see first thing I'm gonna do is take on the little track over there I will take some tools to change the sag because that's probably the first thing I'm gonna have to change if anything so let's do it
Okay, first ride is done. I'm going to say motor, she's 100%. I don't feel like it needs any jetting changes or anything. I mean, yeah, later on I'm gonna do some fine tuning and play with the timing, but for today, first day, initial ride, when I have bigger fish to fry, that motor's 100%. It feels really good. It's got good snap, good torque, rolls in really well. Maybe sometimes a hair bit snappier than my 08 when I first crack into it, but eh, that's okay. Um, rubs out nice and strong, so the head came out good. It's got good torque and it rubs out really nice and strong. Suspension. Suspension, I'm going to call that 90%. Good enough for today. You saw I was able to get over all the big jumps on the track. The biggest jump, I kept kind of clipping a little bit. The last lap, I was like, man, I got I to gotta get this thing more throttle. Get the downside side. side. So I did, and I got over it. No problem. But suspension is 90%. Um, it just feels like it needs to be broken in a little bit more. Uh, some of my things I feel like I need to address is when the front end goes down, it kind of hangs down for a second before it just kind of, it's not bad, just kind of hangs there like maybe if it had a little bit too much rebound uh, dampening and the same with the rear end too, but it feels good though, honestly. Um, another issue I feel is I'm having a tough time getting it to take it inside line. I'm having to drag the front brake around like I'm just having a hard time getting the front end to kind of to kind of uh, kind of pitch down and stay in like this but again suspension is still breaking in springs are brand new that might get better as the day goes on so before i start making any changes since i really don't know where to start it, it seems like everything needs just just a little bit of fine tuning is what it feels like and because nothing's jumped out at me as like you need to address this i'm gonna go do another moto or two get a better feel for it but if I had to guess, I'm going to say at least address that front end for the time being. I'm running six millimeter here. I might end up trying seven millimeter, you know, lowering the front end a little bit, raising the forks, lowering the front end, see if I can get that front end to take the inside line a little bit better. But let's go take it for another ride, and that's on the that'll be on the, the other track, and I'll get another impression from it. Let's go do it. Well, that's the little track it's feeling good everywhere actually i'm gonna take it back onto the big track um i'm still thinking about trying a fork height adjustment but not sure yet i'm kind of still getting to know the bike but I'm, i do have a flathead out there i'm gonna try adding one more low speed compression on the rear just see what that does i gotta change something see it see what happens
I made my first change. I actually went and added one click low speed compression. Just one click. Because remember, I originally found the bike at eight clicks, but the manual says it was supposed to be at nine, but it was at eight when the dots line up. I came out here with originally, I just put it to nine. Just I, I thought, well, let me start on the softer side. I've gone back to eight where I found the bike originally. Um, I think it feels better. Uh, definitely doesn't feel worse. I'm going to do another ride or so, and then I'll go back to 9. I like to go back sometimes if, I, if I'm a little bit on the fence about something or I'm not quite sure. Uh, shoot, I think I'm going to leave the front end the way it is today, the fork height. You know, now that I think it's starting to take the inside line a little better, so I think the forks are already just starting to break it, break in a little bit and loosen up and the springs. It's, I mean, I still have to drag a little bit of front brake through some of the tighter inside lines, but it, it, it's doing it better, and, and uh, I don't think I'm going to have to make a clicker change to the forks today next week i'll do some more fine tuning i think today i'm mainly just going to focus on getting the rear end right that's that's what i'm seeing as of right now um it's really close i just sometimes think that there's a, a slight bit of room for improvement back there but it's more of a taste thing than it is uh being able to go fast or a stability thing it's more just you know my acquired taste of what i like to get out of the rear end of a bike so i've added one click of low speed compression so far uh, I'm gonna go do another ride or two and then I'll bring it back and see if I liked it pre actually better previously you know probably not but we'll see and um, hmm, then I guess I'll just go from there let's go do another ride actually scratch that idea I'm gonna leave that low speed compression right where it's at I just took it over to the other track and some of the minor things that I wish to address on the rear suspension out there on the smaller track that extra uh, click of low speed did the trick so I'm gonna leave that where it's at I'm gonna go back to the other track and I might add a click of rebound on the rear let's just see what that does so let's go try it
I've added one click of rebound and uh, that felt good then but you know tracks getting rougher it's getting choppier so I decided to go back out on the rebound went back back to where it was and pulled that one click out to see if it was better and that felt good too it's kind of splitting hairs in some ways although I think I'm favoring the extra one click rebound damping on the rear shock so I'm gonna try it again back and forth but I'm gonna do it on the other track the smaller track let's see how that does there I also still think there is some uh, more tuning to be done in the fork height here, but I'm going to save that for next week. That's close enough for now. I'm going to save that for next week at a track that I'm more familiar with, MX-74. Um, sag, I haven't had to touch it. Remember I set the uh, static sag at 34 millimeters. You can see my fingernail polish right there matches the fingernail polish right there. Feels spot on the way it is. Got Cornholio back there. Anyway, uh, but I'm, I've never been the one to leave anything alone. I, I don't settle on much of anything unless I at least try. So also next week, I will try raising and lowering the rear sag just a little bit and see if I'm missing out on something. You never know unless you try. But for today, that's good enough over here to track that I, I this is probably only my fifth time to this track. I'm good with that. That's good. I'm good with the fork height set. That set, uh, we're set at six millimeters. That's good. I'm good with the clickers, the rebound, and the compression on the forks for today. That's good. Um, I, I'm now good with the low speed. I'm good with the high speed on the rear shot for today. I will try to fool with that next week at a track that I'm more familiar with. For today, I, I think I'm just going to fool around with that rebound just a little bit more on the other track. And I'll pretty much call it a wrap as far as the tuning is concerned. Jetting, spot on. I, I don't have to make any changes. It's, it's good. So, yeah, let's take it for another ride.
back from the track. She's all nice and clean. She's still dripping wet. I guess I'll go ahead and start with the motor. The motor came out really good, really clean, really crisp, crisp running. Uh, good roll on power, a good initial snap, but it doesn't overdo it as far as the snap, and that's thanks to the V Force 4X reads with the spacer. If you caught my read review, uh, that's what I was able to achieve with them on my 2018, and it, it brought that to this too. So, really good mid range, a good strong pull on top end. You'll notice in a lot of the straightaways when I'm getting a throttle as the bike will rev out toward the top. I don't know if you can notice it or not, but the front end would start to lift up on me and, and at the end of that gear, and that was really cool. It sounds really good with the Pro Circuit pipe and silencer. Brand new pipes, nice and clean, gives that real tingy sound. I was proud of this bike every time I started it up rolling through the pits. It just sounded beautiful. Not once on the track did I ever feel like I needed to make a jetting change. The jetting feels spot on with the jetting that I chose for it. Now, obviously, I have experience with these bikes. You know, I've been riding YZ250s for a long time, so it's, it doesn't take me much to get these things, to, to get a good guess in the shop of what I think it's going to need. Of course, I did originally start with the 52 here, Pilot here in the shop, and I moved it back down to the 50 because it seemed like it was running a little rich in the shop just off on tipping of the throttle. And at the track, the 50 also did great, so I stuck with that. Uh, the full throttle, the 172 main, felt great, so I just stuck with that. So didn't have to touch the jetting. Ignition timing is set to stock. That feels good. Good middle ground. Everything in the motor feels good. I don't think I'm going to have to change anything with the motor until I get the suspension completely dialed in. And when I dig into the motor, it's not going to be because I'm, I think that there can be room for improvement. It's just going to be more of like a... Let's just see, you know, I'm going to try a head with a little bit more compression and then one with a little bit less. I might try a little bit advancing the timing, a little bit retarding the timing, but it's not because I'm missing anything. It's just, you know, I'm going to turn over every stone and see if maybe we can find something. But as of right now, it's so good. It's going to be tough. And I'll say the same thing with the suspension. These, these new Yamahas come with really good suspension. This 22, it's going to be with the same with the 23 to 24 and 25 YZ 52 stroke. But they updated the suspension in 2022, and it was it's just like the modern day four strokes on the, the YZ four strokes. Back in the earlier day, the YZ four strokes and the two strokes, you had to do a lot of tuning when you bought brought the bike home brand new to get it right. It was good suspension, but to get it right, you had to do a lot of tuning. As years went on, it was less and less tuning. By like 2013 and 14 and 15 and 16. It, the four strokes didn't need much tuning. The two, the two strokes still did because they didn't really update the two stroke suspension much from 2006 up until 2022. It wasn't really updated much. So with the two strokes, you always had to do a lot of tuning when you brought them home if it was bone stock. And uh, but with the four strokes, every year they they got close. They were hitting the mark better and better. They're closer to the mark every year. By 2015, it was just a couple clicks, maybe a fork height adjustment, a little bit of sag work, and you were right there. Uh, by the year 2024, the new one, like the YZ250F I test road, man, them you can just buy them and throw them on the track. Honestly, they they, they just don't need anything. Yeah, you you you're gonna fine tune it a little bit for your liking, but as far as being able to put on the track and run your full race pace right from day one, they can do that. Perfect. They're hitting the mark, and I'm gonna say that that's what they've done to this YZ250 right here. It's it's just like that. I I didn't have to make a single click to the forks. Uh, obviously, I'm I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna plan another test and tune day next week at MX74 because that is a sand a sandier track and it's a faster track and the suspension speaks to me real good on, on that track and I can usually find any flaws that the suspension will have and I can address them. But as of Moto Bros Okeechobee, the forks were doing fabulous. Didn't feel like I needed to make a change. The fork height at 60 millimeter felt good there. Didn't think I needed to make a change. Um, the shock, I originally, the, the rebound was, the manual says it's supposed to be 8 clicks, but if you remember I found the shock at 6 clicks, so I didn't show you in the video, but I eventually just moved it to 7 clicks before I went out, put it in the middle of what the manual said it was supposed to be, and what I found it, and then the compression, the low speed compression, I found it at, oh god, what was it, like 8.5, it was right, right in the middle of a click, but I started at 9, I mean, I'm sorry, at 8 on that one. Sorry, I'm getting it all mixed up here. The manual says that the low speed compression spike is supposed to be at 9. I found it at 8. So I put that to 9. 
and I found the low the rebound at six, and I just put that in the middle. What the manual said was supposed to be eight, but I found it at six with the punch mark in, lined up. So I put that at seven. Went to the track. Made, as you saw, I made changes to the uh, to the low speed and the rebound. And when it was all said and done, I for that day that track I found putting it back to where the punch marks line up, where the bike came stock, was actually perfect. Same with the rebound on the bottom. I went back. It's, back to six clicks that, that's what's doing good so uh, for that track that day obviously I'm gonna take it to 74 and go for it again so long story short clickers are all stock and it feels great right there and that's you know I'm, I'm sure you're watching this video hoping I'm gonna have to make a lot of changes and and uh, maybe you'll pick up some tips or whatever as we go along because I just got to get this bike right but man Yamaha is just making it too easy for us they're hitting the mark right off the showroom floor more and more nowadays and uh, it's making people like me not have to do so much and we like to make changes because we like to feel like it's ours like it does so good because of our two hands but holy cow Yamaha thanks at least I'll yeah, well I'll take it to 74 next week I there's there are some things okay I'm gonna say it's at 90 percent right when I first put on the track it was right at 90 percent I'll like I said, I wasn't gonna do them big jumps on unless it was at least 90%. It was totally at 90%, so I did the big jumps. But then I put the clickers back on the rear shock back to stock, just one click away for the rebound of compression. And I'm gonna say that got it to like 93%, maybe 95. That last 5% to get this thing 100% for me, I believe I'm gonna be able to do that at 74. And what I believe it needs, what I'm looking for, I don't know what it needs, but what I'm looking for is a little more ease of riding. What I mean by that is right now it, it's kind of like set up for someone like let's say Deegan. It when you charge hard, it does great. When you're when you're when you push it hard, it's up to the task. It it likes you to bomb through things and just uh, bulldog it, and it's ready for that. Uh, the harder and the fast. Anytime someone would get beside me and start pressuring me and I start opening it up, the bike was always up to the task and more than willing. However. You know, I'm a vet rider, and whenever I want to take it easy and kind of step step it down just a notch and kind of um, cruise the track at a high speed, of course, but cruise the track more like saving energy type riding. Like if you're doing a long moto and you got to save energy somewhere later in the moto, um, it it doesn't it doesn't seem to favor that as much because it it just it's a very aggressive setup. So what I'm going to try to do is I, I like to tune it at my age. I like to tune it a little bit more in the middle of that not as aggressive but not overly friendly somewhere right in the middle so when I do feel like I need to bulldog it and get aggressive and hang it out it's capable of doing it but yet when I feel like I want to back it down and conserve some energy just do, put in some laps it's capable of doing that too so I'm hoping at 74 I can aim for that middle ground now what it's going to take to get that that's the question because it's the closer you get, I explained this in my video series, I got a link in the description, but the closer you get to your mark, the tougher it is to know what to address. When something's far out, it kind of jumps out at you. This thing's so close to 100% that it's really tough for me to just pinpoint what it's going to need. Don't know exactly where I'm going to start yet when I get to 74 next week. I'm, I think I'm just going to throw it on the track first and see what jumps out at me. If nothing jumps out at me, well then I might start with the sag on the rear end maybe uh, lower raise that a little bit probably most likely trying maybe a hair lower and then I'm gonna go back to the four kites over here I don't know I'm just gonna do a couple laps and figure it out I will say the sag remember I said it at 34 millimeter static sag right here in the shop um, with, with you know with the spring just being put in and everything that felt great didn't feel like I needed to bring it any higher or any lower I was able to ride that right off the rip so that's good for you guys that um, are more concerned about the race sag after I get it dialed in at 74 next week, I will get the race sag numbers for you guys and I will recheck the static sag numbers because the static sag numbers tend to change a little bit once the spring sets, seats in. Anytime you put a spring on, even if it's a used spring and you, and you screw it on, you put it on the bike, after a couple rides, it, it kind of gets seated into its position and the, the static sag can change a little bit. So I'll get the rider sag and the static sag numbers for you after I get it dialed in next week. The Stark electric bike well I got to ride a Stark this weekend and that's pretty cool Gabe a really nice guy that was pitted beside us offered me to ride it and I was like yeah sure I rode it towards the end of the day track was pretty rough but that's all good uh, he recharged the battery for me 
he set it to 60 horsepower. He asked me what I wanted it set to, and I said 60 is good. I'm used to riding 450s. I ride, you know, I, I I ride everything from 125s, 252 strokes, 450s. But let's let's go to 60 horsepower. That sounds good. Uh, he had the uh, the engine braking turned all the way up. I had him turn it down to about about a two-stroke level. I forgot what percentage he set it at, but he did it for me, and he hit he hit the nail on the head there. It was perfect. Um, he had the suspension redone on the bike and he also had the mod done where this clutch lever is now your rear brake and also he had a rear brake lever too so I could use the rear brake either down at the pedal, the foot pedal or up at up on the handlebars. That was a little weird but I got used to that but that was a little weird. I actually, uh, can you stall electric bike? Well, you can stop electric bike. I stopped an electric bike on the inside line. I went to go take an inside line and grab that, grab the, uh, the clutch here to try to get control of the bike and it just locked up the back wheel. I came to a dead stop. I was like, whoa, hold on. I got to get this together. That is not a clutch anymore. I had to get that in my head. Uh, I was very, actually, pretty surprised. The chassis is really good on it. I didn't expect that from a new manufacturer. The flex is good on it. It's perfect. The head angle on the steering is perfect. The bike was pretty easy to scrub. He had the suspension dialed in. I was actually more impressed with the chassis and the suspension than I was the motor not saying the motor was bad it was good but that's what surprised me most it was interesting riding a quiet bike that was weird um, the weight you really don't feel the extra weight so much just like he pointed out it's a quality bike when you sit on it and you look down at it and stuff it's definitely a quality bike it, it has that uh, the motor it was set at 60 horsepower and I, f I feel it I could feel all that horsepower at what I would call second gear and third gear speeds but I will say by fourth gear speeds and fifth gear speeds, it seems to taper off. It's like all electric vehicles, they, they produce more of their torque at lower speeds. And as the speeds rise, they kind of taper off. And that's what this was doing. So there's an uphill section at Moto Bros Okeechobee. On this bike, I'd come out of the corner in third gear and then going up the uphill, I'd grab fourth. And man, it would just peel my eyes back. And, and the front end would start loafing up on me and it was awesome. On the Stark, I'd come around that corner and it would have more than enough, 60 horsepower, more than enough power down at the third gear speeds. Easy to peel out, a lot of power. But then once you get to about fourth gear speeds, it would start tapering off. By the time I got to the top of that hill, it didn't seem to quite be producing the same amount of horsepower as even my 252 stroke was. So that, that's interesting, but if you ever ridden a golf cart or these electric uh, scooters and stuff like that. You know how they, they produce a lot of torque at lower speeds, but as you start getting up to the top speeds, they start tapering off. Well, that's what these darks kind of, that's what they kind of do. And that, so that, that was a, a learning experience for me. I didn't know that they were gonna do that. But, so it produces a lot of torque and a lot of horsepower at lower speeds, but it seems to taper off versus the gasoline motors at your higher speeds. Was easy to ride and was cool. Um, Thanks again, thanks Gabe for letting me test rod it. I will say I was happy to get my clutch back. I'm I just been doing this for too long, and I like having a clutch to control to control the bike. I've heard other riders that ride Stark say if they can only just have a clutch lever, we get used to having that control not only with our right hand but also our left hand. But now back to the YZ. Uh, remember I bought this bike for four thousand five hundred. I just tallied the total up of everything I have invested in it. And I have $2,500 worth of parts invested in. So you're looking at a $7,000 bike here. With all the parts that I have on it. All the mods and graphics and fresh plastic. New tires. You name it. $7,000 bike. Once again, thank you YouTube. Thank you all you guys that watch these videos. I appreciate every single one of you guys for, uh, for coming along on this ride with me. I know this video is not as information packed it's more of just my journey on this new bike but thanks for coming along the bike is awesome i really like this new yamaha i love the updated suspension they were way overdue for this for a long time it feels like a totally different bike uh even suspension body work you name it I, it does it feels like a two-stroke still and you can tell it's a yz250 but it feels like an all new yz250 and that's really cool sounds a little different too with with the air intake coming right here. It has more of an air box sound. That's pretty cool. The spring rates I chose feel right on. Although I will say, anytime you put new fork springs in, if they feel perfect, 
on day one, you're like, wow, I got that rate just right. Down the road, you might need slightly stiffer. If they feel a hair bit too stiff on day one, down the road, they're probably going to feel spot on. Fork springs break in, it's what they do. And these feel perfect right off the rip. They match the rear spring, the 5.3 on the rear, on the rear, and I have 0.46 up front. The 0.46 match the 5.3 perfectly as of right now so I know down the road I'm gonna have to move this up to point set 47 which I kind of expected because back when I was running the 5.3 on my 2018 same thing happened I put 46 up front and down the road I had to buy uh, a set of point 48s and only put one of the point 48s in one of the forks to make an average of point 47 because they sell them like that every other size so uh, factory connection sells point 46 and point 48 and 0.50 that's how I do it so down the road I can see that I'm gonna have to buy a set of 0.48s and put one of them in there to make a 0.47 but I'm gonna wait until the springs break in and starts becoming soft and then I'll do that and then it'll be spot on so I'll just keep running it the way it is for the time being but stay tuned next week I'm taking her out to MX 74 it's a track that I'm definitely more familiar with definitely more at home at and it's an outdoor fast sandier track with a lot of bumps and the suspension really talks to me there we're going to keep digging in the suspension and um, i'm just going to try to get a little more out of it get it up to that 100 percent once again i appreciate all you guys watching this stay tuned also i will have a power jet video coming in on that one for these yz 250s probably uh probably in about a week hope you guys enjoy your evening catch you next time low speed compression on the rear shock yeah, that's right there you go. If you have to catch me right that the one after you like where you get on the track, there's the first little table. That's the only one I can really. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah.